This is the New Eden update for Monday, February 8th, 2016. I'm Wiggles, and here's a roundup of a few stories from around New Eden. We start today with a post by CCP Logibro. Today, on the 8th of February, we applied an update to Tranquility's login server, also known as the Single Sign On or SSO. We had previously deployed this update to Singularity and discovered the issue whereby two database tables were conflicted by the SSO and therefore users were able and given valid authentication tokens for accounts that were not their own. At the time Singularity was down, so no other data was compromised, we fixed the issue, cleaned up the mess and tested the fix thoroughly and deployed the fixed version to Tranquility today. Unfortunately, the same issue reoccurred with the update and people were once again able given valid authentication tokens for accounts that were not their own, and that gave them the ability to log into accounts in question and perform any actions that the owner of the account would have been able to in-game. We have not found any evidence that unauthorized access to the services were provided or possible and has taken place, but we continue to investigate and confirm that this is the case. As soon as this issue was identified as occurring on Tranquility, we shut down the login server, preventing any further errant authentication tokens from being given out. Since the map meant that players couldn't log into the game and those with errant existing authentication tokens would still be able to access other accounts, we also decided to instigate an emergency downtime on Tranquility to resolve the issues. Our next step was to purge all active authentication, to authentication tokens, making all the errant ones useless and roll back the login server update so the issue did not reoccur. As such, all players will need to log in again when using our services that utilize SSO, including third-party services and the game launcher. We are compiling a list of our affected accounts and our customer services and security teams are working to verify the integrity of the accounts and assets contained therein. We'll be in touch with those affected in due course. So if you are not required, if you are not required to file a support ticket, However, if you feel you have been adversely affected by the issue, you're still welcome to submit a ticket. Next, we go to Eve News 24 for a repost of a dev post about a new module idea, the Heavy Stasis Grapplers. I'm excited to see how you creative pilots take advantage of them, especially in small, solo gang battleship pilots who should get a lot of value from them. The Stasis Grappler module is a new class of web that has a high strength, low optimal and high fall off. It will be the first Webify type of module to use fall off, which will require the strength of the web as a range, which will reduce the strength of the web as the range increases. This module can only be fit to a battleship in capitals, and it's just one per ship. It is separate from existing stasis web fires and doesn't get bonuses from any web specific bonuses, so no rage bonuses on Balgons or strength from Vindicators, and no benefit from gang links. The current plan statistics are 1km optimal with 8km fall off for tech 1 and 10km fall off for tech 2. The strength is extremely high, running on from minus 80% to T1 to minus 85% on T2, up to 88.75 on high meta officer. We are currently planning converting existing officer web fires into the versions of these new modules. We don't intend these modules to be completely replacing normal webs of battleship use. Instead, they will provide a very strong opinion, sorry, option for when you fit your and fit for your playstyle that matches the advantages, while still leaving a solid niche for normal webs at longer distances. The overheating of this module impacts optimal, not fall off, with a whooping, whooping 300% bonus increasing optimal range from 1 to 4 kilometers. Here's the stats that we are currently planned, and of course everything else is subject to change based on feedback from you all. This module is scheduled for our March release, not the February release coming next Tuesday, or tomorrow, so there will be plenty of time for testing this out on Singularity and providing feedback. Next we have an announcement post again posted today by CCP Logibro about the skill trading extractors that are being launched tomorrow. With the upcoming February release and launching of the skill trading system, the skill extractors are going to be available for purchase starting tomorrow. There are several different ways to acquire skill extractors, either from CCP or eventually from the in-game markets for ISK. Additionally, to celebrate the release of skill trading, we are providing a range of offers for Aurum, Plex and Subscription. You can acquire skill extractors from the New Eden store using Aurum. Skill extractors can be purchased in quantities of 1, 5 or 10 for 1,000, 4,500 or 8,000 Aurum respectively. And for the rest of February, all Aurum packages offer extra bonus Aurum amounts. So if you've been eyeing up some new skins for your ship or just want to stock on with the brand new skill extractors, it's the perfect time to grab some Aurum. 
You can alternatively purchase steel extractors directly from account management. Skill extractors can be purchased in packs of 1, 5, or 10 for 5, 5 US dollars, $5.49, $24.99, or $44.99 US dollars, respectively. All of our existing payment methods are supported and available in all of our supported currencies. If you're looking at renewing your subscription, our offers on 3, 6, or 12 month subscriptions now include full extractors for a limited time. Our last post today is from Crossing Zebras and is titled, funnily enough, Extracting Rage. Pay to win has always been a very sensitive subject among the EVE player community. CCP created a game which does not require any grind to acquire experience points, but at the same time grow into E. Grow in EVE means long-term commitment. For subscription-based games, this was in uh, innovative. Zero punctuation makes fun that EVE rewards you for not playing it, but a time when World of Warcraft or earlier MMOs had set the bar by forcing players to go through repetitive quests to just progress in levels. CCP introduced a wholly new idea in business terms. It was also smart. After all, you may not have to do the mind-numbing PvE, but you still had to keep paying your subscription if you wanted to gain more skills. In fact, you were in it for the long haul, much more than so the classical MMO grinding. A teenager with much free time on the hands and little social life to speak of may advance rather quickly if social progression is based on XP grind. An adult with a job and family and a mortgage would inevitably fall behind. In EVE, you have to keep your subscription paid to gain your skill points. And that playing field was level across the board, with a slight advantage extra is grants to players because you can buy attribute and heart improving implants, which increase learning speed slightly. Time was what players had to sink into EVE in order to become better and more explicitly subscription time. To begin with, this system rubs many players the wrong way because it feels too much like pay to win. In this point, he's actually talking about the new skill extractors. The logic behind the reasoning appears intuitive. By spending money, a player can gain an advantage through buying skills that are necessarily better for the ship or bonuses. Personally, I would contest that true pay to win would not. I would contest that true pay to win, sorry, would imply that they are powerful items which can only be bought with money or otherwise not available in game. Furthermore, by the logic applied here, Eve would already be pay to win with existing systems. After all, I can spend money on Plex, convert that into ISK, and then go buy myself an Officer Fit Alliance tournament ship. Like I stated before, though, success in EVE is simply not based on equipment or skill points. Elsewhere in EVE-related content, new blog posts are out from Rick Javix and Noisy Gamer, and new podcasts are out from This Week in New Eden, The Tim Four Factory, and another CSM 11 interview from CSM Watch. Plex prices in the Forge region are registering an average trading price today of 1,261,000,000 ISK so far, which is up from yesterday's closing average of 1,251,000,000. The top buy order in Jita right now is 1,254,000,000 and sell orders are starting at 1,273,000,000. Now this price rise is due to the announced numbers for the skill extractors that were tweeted by CCP over the weekend. Please note these numbers have now changed slightly. Thank you to the people who have chosen to support us via Patreon and have decided they get some value from this show and decided to give some back. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash wiggles to find out about how you can support this show. And if you can't support via Patreon, I do understand that, and I want to remind you that you can always support us by telling people about this show. After last week's testing, I now broadcast the show live on Twitch only and upload to YouTube afterwards after recording the show for the podcast. So please, if you have any feedback about how this is going, please let me know. Thank you. This has been the New Eden Update for Monday, February 8th, 2016. You can leave comments in the show blog at newedenupdate.com or you can tweet us at New Eden Update. I also encourage you to check out all the latest headlines, podcasts, blog posts and other information you can find on totaleve.com. We'll be back tomorrow. I'm Wiggles and thank you for listening.